Okay, we're going to move on to our final story, Mom. And uh, I think you can guess what it is. Can you guess what it is? I can. Root Talk, which was on top of my list. That is the top of your list. The number one thing you think should not be discussed. How you got on the road, how you got here, which highway you took, but then you got off an exit. But then there was blocked, so you had to take the detour, right? That's the one. Yes. Okay. The very brave Nancy Updike took on that one. Poor Nancy. Maria, I want to say up front that this story does take place in Los Angeles, the epicenter of Root Talk. We're going into the heart of Root Talk darkness. I talked to Chris Garcia, very nice man, and he told me about a drive he took about a year and a half ago from Manhattan Beach in Los Angeles to his parents' house, about a 25-minute trip. Chris was driving, and his dad was in the front seat next to him. We start heading east on Manhattan Beach Boulevard, and then we make a right on Pacific Coast Highway, and then a left on Artesia. So they're in the car heading south, and uh, they got the radio on, they're listening to oldies, sharing a bag of chips. They've driven this route probably hundreds of times. But something odd was happening in the car, so Chris started recording their conversation on his phone. It's not a great recording, but you can you can hear it. Chris and his dad speak Spanish to each other, as you'll hear in a second, and his dad was pointing out the window as they were driving. Uh, he says, oh, this is the, the famous thing, the, um, it's the, how do you call it? And then I say, Miracosta. Miracosta. Eh? My high school. My high school. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, high school. So Chris knew when he was taking this drive with his dad that his father had Alzheimer's. He'd gone to the doctor. He'd been diagnosed. But this drive was the first time Chris had been with his dad when he'd forgotten something so familiar. Yeah, I'd never seen him uh, forget anything, really. Like, I know that's a big thing about uh, dementia and Alzheimer's as people become forgetful, but he hadn't really exhibited those types of signs before. And where are you driving at this point? Uh, Right now we are... Still on Artesia? We're still on Artesia. And the next thing he says, he says, did you play a lot? Did you play a lot at, what's it called, at the school, Miracosta? And I said, play what? And then he says, uh, for example, baseball. Which, to me, was very alarming because that's all we did growing up. And it's a rite of passage among Cubans, you know? We played baseball all the time since I probably could stand up. I've been playing baseball with my dad. And um, I couldn't believe that he didn't remember that I had played baseball. I, it, I was in such shock that I, I just continued to speak as if we were having a completely regular conversation. And then he says, Maricosta, what, um, what place, what did you, what did you do? And what he meant was what position, what I inferred from it was that, what position did you play? <laughs> I say, first base, and he's like, ah, oh, great. And pitcher? Lefty or righty? I say lefty. <laughs> and then he starts laughing, and he goes, man, whew, if I were around then... I would have, uh, I would have shown you how to throw the ball. I would have, I would have taught you at all. I was a, I was a pitcher. I was a good one. He's like, look, I'm a lefty too. And then he starts, you know, pretend throwing the ball with his left arm. So they're about halfway home at this point. Chris had turned onto Hawthorne Boulevard, and his family used to live right off Hawthorne. So they're passing uh, by this diner they had all these funny memories from called Norm's, the, the mall they always used to go to. But Chris's father was not recognizing anything. He, he had no idea where they were. And it was totally unnerving him. He just was looking at the streets and asking Chris, you know, where are we, trying to orient himself. I said, we're taking this street to Western. And then my dad says, I can't get out at Western. Um, I don't have enough to cover that fare. I can't go that far. So he, he thinks, now he thinks he's in a taxi. 
Yeah, now he thinks I'm a cab driver. And he calls me young man. He goes, uh, where are you going, este muchacho, young man? And you could hear it in my voice. I'm like, hmm? Um, I say we're going down to Western and then we're making a right and that will get us home. And I keep on reiterating home, la casa, our home. We're taking you home. And none of this is really computing to him. When you were a kid, um, how was his sense of direction? Completely stellar sense of direction. When I was a student at Berkeley, my dad came to visit me, and I had class all day, and so my dad just went out by himself. And when I I got home, my dad wasn't even home yet. He comes home an hour later, and he's like, yeah, uh, well, I started off, I went to Oakland, I went to the farmer's market there. I almost got a baseball game, but I didn't. And then I took Bart across to San Francisco, and then I went to Golden Gate Park, met this wonderful Russian man who was very sweet, and then, uh, you know, saw that Stowe Lake place there and walked across the beach. You call that a beach? It's really foggy and cold. Uh, Anyway, really fun day. That's the type of sense of direction and the type of, like, sense of adventure that my dad had where you could just leave him in a city and he would just kill it. And he uh, pretty much had one of the most amazing memories of anyone I'd ever known. So they're just about home at this point, and Chris had been planning on turning off of Hawthorne Boulevard onto 190th and then onto Western, like he usually did. But he was so caught up in what was happening in the car with his dad that he blew right past 190th, drove all the way to Carson, turned there, and that's when his dad turned to him and said, where are you from? He's like, where are you from, my friend? And I go, what, what, do, you, what do you mean, where am I from? And I say, I'm from here. And he says, the United States? And I say, yeah. Um, and then very sweetly, he turns to me and he goes, I'll appreciate th- this ride my entire life. You are a very good and decent person. But, um, still, you know, sweet, charming guy, even though he didn't know that I was his son anymore. You could hear the, the indicator, the turn signal. And I tell him it's the next block. 218. Which is our block. And is you sure this is street? Just let me out. And I say, Dad, I'm taking you all the way home. <laughs> and, in, and then he goes, Que barbaro. Which is like, he's going like, What a stud. And he's like, To, you. <laughs> to me. He's like, what a stud. Many, many, many thanks, compadre. Like, thanks, brother. And then he goes, uh, may God... Oh, that's where I live. (laughs) So all of a sudden he recognizes it. Yeah. And we walk up to the apartment, and I open the door, and I go, um... Here we are, Dad. And um, and he was like, you were the one that was driving me? And I go, yeah. And, I go, yeah. and he goes, uh, really? And I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, you were the one that was talking all this and that and all that stuff? And I go, yeah, Dad, I gave you the ride. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Did he ride, Dad? My dad's like, he's, it's such a sweet tone in his voice. He's like, really? Oh, ah, and he's just like, oh, I can't believe it. (laughs) Nancy Updike talking with Chris Garcia. 
Chris is a comedian based in Los Angeles. And to find out when he's coming to your city, you can go to chrisgarciacomedy.com.